Welcome to this Fliptish tutorial on how to set up this slim base version of the K2 kiosk and card reader. So let's start with unboxing and assembly of the kiosk. You should have received three boxes. We recommend you inspect the boxes and please contact the Fliptish team at help at fliptish.com if there is any damage to the devices or the boxes after they have arrived at your location. Please bear in mind a Phillips head screwdriver is required but not provided for this assembly process. In the smallest flat box, you will find the base plate. Remove the packaging and place it on the floor with the rubber feet touching the floor. Next, open the second largest box. In here, you'll find the back support, the stand, the triangular cable or line cover, and a box of screws. In this box, you will find 16 screws of four varying sizes, three Allen wrenches, four washers, and four rubber discs. Start by placing the stand on the base plate and line it up with the holes. Use the two largest screws with washers to secure the stand to the base plate, but do not screw them in too tightly until all the screws being used to secure the stand to the base plate are in place. Then tilt the stand forward and use four black screws to fasten the plate to the stand from underneath. Hand tighten and then fasten all six screws with the Allen wrench. Now insert the kiosk back support into the stand as shown here. Fix the back support with the stand using six of the six by 12 millimeter screws. Once it's secured, open the third and final box and remove the kiosk from it. In this box, you will also find the card reader, the power cable for the card reader and the mount for the card reader. There will also be two other boxes, one with the kiosk power cable, printing paper, ethernet cable, and top light reflector, and the other box will have a wall mount should you decide to wall mount your kiosk. The next step is to stand your kiosk up and remove the two back plastic panels with the clips and remove the silicone bags as shown in the video. Then sit the kiosk into the back support and fix the back support to the kiosk using four screws. While the back panels are removed, let's take this opportunity to unplug the USB that powers the front scanner, which will not be in use. Pop this USB out and you can just leave it where it is. Then make sure the power button above the USB ports is switched on, as this is one of two power buttons that need to be on in order for the kiosk to activate. Now let's look at attaching the mount for your card reader to the K2 kiosk. Using the clip, remove the black cap beside the speaker on the right side of the kiosk to expose the three screw holes you can see here. Secure the card reader arm to the kiosk using the three screws provided. Then apply the sticky pad to the back of your card reader and insert it into the card reader cradle. This should make it hard to remove. Then plug the charging cable into the card reader and slide the cradle into the card reader arm. You will hear a click when it's correctly in place. Then plug in the larger end into one of the free ports on the back of the kiosk. Next, remove the printing paper, ethernet cable, power cable, and top light reflector from its packaging. Pop the top light reflector into the slot at the top of the kiosk with the arrows pointing downwards. We recommend you use an ethernet cable for improved connectivity, but a Wi-Fi connection can also be used to operate your kiosk. If you're using an ethernet cable, then plug it into the port on the back of the kiosk and then run the cable down through the stand and out the hole at the bottom. It can then be plugged into your router, modem or wall connection point. Please do the same with the power cable. Then replace the two plastic panels. Please note the larger plastic panel won't go flush with the kiosk as the power cable for the card reader will be protruding. Then attach the cable or line cover at the bottom of the stand. This doesn't require any screws and will just pop into place. Now to power on the kiosk, press on the two buttons on either side of the front of the kiosk and the front panel will fall forward. Switch on the second of the two power switches and the kiosk will turn on. Now let's add the printing paper. 
press the small black lever to the right of the power button to expose a white spindle. Remove this and slide it through the paper roll. Then pop the paper roll and spindle into the kiosk. Pull out the paper a little bit and close the door. The kiosk will then automatically cut the paper for you and that's it. Okay, let's look at setting up the kiosk. Now that we've switched on both of the power buttons, the kiosk screen will eventually turn white and this will indicate that the kiosk is ready for the setup process to begin. Then select the start setup button. Then select the country that the kiosk is located in and the relevant time zone. You will then have the option to select Wi-Fi or an ethernet network. I'm going to use a Wi-Fi network for this demo, but we do suggest you use an ethernet cable for improved connectivity. If you select Wi-Fi, you will be prompted to enter a password. Then press the next button. Then press start configuration. Then press the enter system button at the bottom of the screen. You will know the process has been successful when a six digit code appears on the screen. Now I'm going to hand you over to our kiosk expert, Rob, who's going to show you how to connect this kiosk to your online store using the Flipdish portal. First, we need to visit portal.flipdish.com to continue. The first step is visit your account page. And then on the left hand panel, we need to select kiosks. Once we select kiosks, we can add a new kiosk on the bottom right hand side of the screen. We can then name the kiosk. I'm going to name it Pizza Cafe. We then select the stores we want the kiosk to be associated to. So for a single store, we just select one store. And for a multi-store kiosk, we select multiple stores. Then we enter our six digit pin code, which is 987. 384. When I click add kiosk, we should see the kiosk screen connect to the store. Okay, now let's move on to setting up the card reader and connecting it to the kiosk. Once the kiosk has been powered on and the kiosk setup has been completed, there are two ways we can connect the card reader to the kiosk. First, let's look at using the toggle settings on the device itself. This is really useful if you don't have access to the Flipdish portal at the time, or if the card reader has disconnected and you need to quickly reconnect it. Press and hold the Flipdish logo in the bottom right hand corner of the kiosk screen. After five seconds, the logo will turn black. Then swipe from the right hand side of the kiosk to the center of the kiosk and a menu will appear. Please select toggle settings, which is the option in the bottom right hand corner of the menu. Then under integrations, click on Stripe Terminal. Then press the start button in the top right hand corner of the screen. You will then be asked if you would like to connect a new card reader. Click connect device. You will then be asked to enable Bluetooth. Select enable and continue. Then turn on location services by pressing enable and continue. If location services aren't activated on the device already, you will be automatically redirected to this page. And at the top of the page, you will need to press on the toggle button to turn them on. Then press the circle button at the bottom of the page to return to the kiosk home screen and click on the Flipdish app again to continue the process. You will then be shown all the available devices after the kiosk has scanned for them. The device identifier code will start with three letters followed by 12 numbers. To make sure this is the correct number, you can look at the back of your card reader to verify this. You must click on the identifier code that corresponds to the code on the back of your card reader to finish the process. This may take up to 15 minutes to complete. Once it is complete, you'll see a pop-up saying successfully connected and you can click close. And then click close again in the top right hand corner. You will then see the Visa logo is now visible in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, indicating that the card reader has been successfully connected. You can also connect your card reader using a combination of the Flipdish portal and the kiosk itself. To do this, go to portal.flipdish.com and then follow these instructions. Once you're on the Flipdish portal homepage, use the icons on the side of the page, scroll down to sales channels and then click kiosks. Then select the kiosk you want to connect your card reader to. Scroll down to connect card reader and click card reader pairing mode. You will then be asked to enable Bluetooth on your kiosk device. Click OK. Then move back to your Flipdish kiosk. You will be asked if you would like to connect a card reader. Click connect device. You may have to allow your kiosk to enable Bluetooth, but since this kiosk already has Bluetooth enabled, I won't be prompted with that. A pop-up will then appear showing you available devices. Your device serial number should start with CHB. 
If you're unsure if this is your device serial number, you can check the back of the card reader where it will be written. Click on the corresponding serial number. It may take up to 15 minutes for the card reader to connect. Once the card reader is connected successfully, you will see a Visa logo in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. You can also confirm it was connected successfully by returning to the Flipdish portal where you will now see the disconnect card reader button at the bottom of the page is no longer greyed out. That's it, you're all set up. We advise that you now place a test order with your kiosk to ensure that everything is up and running before giving access to your customers. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the K2 kiosk and if you have any questions contact us on help at flipdish.com or see the description of this video for more helpful links.